Watch complications are like apps on your smartphone. They make it infinitely more interesting. In the world of watches, you'll find that just like apps, there are tons of complications out there. Some of these you'll find across the entire price spectrum, like the Chronograph, Daydate, or GMT. But the jump hour complication is usually associated with higher end watches, at least for me. When I think of jump hours, I think of brands like Patek Philippe, Alangan Zone, Omega, and other brands of that ilk. So imagine my reaction when I found out that Pierre Paul Lin has this complication on a $120 watch. For perspective, that's probably less than you'd pay a watchmaker just to open up the case back on a Patek Philippe. The mad lads at Pierre Paulin didn't just stop there though. They've also slapped on a dull that wouldn't look out of place on a watch that costs 5 times more than this. Is a $120 jump hour watch going to be any good? Let's find out. But first, let's explore how the jump hour function works. Instead of traditional hour and minute hands, You'll notice that there's just a minute hand in the center of the dial and a date window on top. Just kidding. That's not the date window. That's actually an hour disc that represents each hour of the day. It's called a jump hour because the hour disc jumps ahead when the hour changes. There's something so satisfying seeing the hour change almost instantly. It also changes backwards, so I kept moving the minute hand back and forth just to see that happen. Yes, I turned this into a really expensive fidget spinner. The hour change doesn't exactly happen at 12 o'clock, but it's close enough. It changes around 58 or 59 minutes on my unit. I mean, it's a $120 watch, so I don't really have an issue with that. I'll be honest, it does take some getting used to to read the time like this. But I managed to adjust after a couple of days of wearing it, and it became sort of second nature once it clicked. If you've seen some of my earlier reviews, you'll probably recognize that signature Pierre Paulin case. Merker Watch Group uses this case on many watches across their sub-brands, including Sizen and Pierre Paulin, and it's easy to see why. It's an unassuming case design that takes on the characteristics of the dull. It's like a case chameleon, if you will. Speaking of which, you can also get this watch in a salmon dial variant, or a smaller and slightly different 36mm case. The case dimensions on this model sit in that sweet spot for most wrist sizes. It's very comfortable on the wrist and you'll have no problem slipping this under a shirt cuff. The case is entirely brushed and the brushwork is quite good for a watch at this price point. They've even included drill lugs to make strap changes a breeze. The sign crown is just push-pull but it snaps in and out with authority. It has a good grip and size and it's very easy to rotate and manipulate. Over the front of the watch, the beautiful top hat crystal really adds to that classy vintage vibe this watch is going for. It's made from K1 mineral, so it's going to scratch up if you're someone who constantly bumps into door frames. I am that someone, so I would have preferred a sapphire, but they probably wouldn't be able to achieve this look with that material, at least at this price point. The mineral crystal is incredibly clear though, so that clarity and the looks more than make up for it. Moving on to the dial, and all I can say is wow. The dial has a silvery white color that looks great in any setting, but it's the sheer amount of detail that's really impressive. There's a combination of textures, shapes, and finishes that look like they belong on a watch well above this price point. You've got raised dots outside the minute track, circular brushing on the minute numerals, a guiloche pattern in the center that flows into dots on the bottom of the subdial with concentric circles on the subdial itself. You've also got a race platform for the Pierre Paulin logo and a beautifully shaped hour window with bevels that just draw your eye towards the time. Let's not forget, you also get a blue sub second hand and minute hand. There's just so many different design elements, but they seamlessly blended them into one harmonious design. On top of that, all of these elements are flawlessly executed. I couldn't find a single misprint or even any dust or quality issues on the dial. I mean, come on. That's not the level of detail and execution you'd expect on a $120 watch. Hands down, this is one of the best dials I've seen in this price range. But. There was one thing that bugged me. 
It's hard to tell the time on the hour because the minute hand circle covers part of the date window. I think this could be fixed if they increase the length of the second hand. So the circle would be a bit higher up without obscuring the hour window. Then again, this only happens if you glance at the watch exactly on the hour. So it's not a huge deal for me. Now, the movement behind this cool complication is the automatic Seagull SD17. As you probably guessed by how excited I am with this, it's my first experience with this jump hour movement. The jump hour complication has been working consistently well, even after I used it as a fidget spinner for weeks. This movement doesn't hack though, so if you're one of those who can't live without a hacking second hand, just know that you're not going to get that here. The movement also ran a bit fast for my liking, but plus 20 seconds per day is nothing crazy for an automatic watch at this price point. Of course, I had to open up the case back and check out the movement. It's not the prettiest thing to look at, but it does the job well and that's all that counts. This watch comes on a leather strap and it's the same one that Merca supplies with a lot of their other models. The quality is decent and it's actually quite supple right out of the box. I didn't really like the way the color paired with the dull, so I put it on this blue leather strap that I got with my Zin 556. I feel this combo instantly made the watch look more classy, and I just love how that blue strap complements the blue hands. So to sum up, what do I think about this pair pollen? Well, there's really nothing else like it at this price point. The jump out complication is going to be a lot of fun and it's a great conversation starter. But I like that you're not just paying for that cool complication. You're getting a unique watch with an incredible design, a dependable seagull movement, and a dial that looks like it belongs on a watch that's way more expensive than this. The one thing you need to be wary about is probably customer service. Now, there are some Chinese brands like Proxima that have excellent customer service, but with most other Chinese brands, it's like the Wild West. Personally, I haven't had to deal with Pierre Paulin for QC issues, but there have been instances online where people have complained about non-existent responses to emails. That's just something to keep in mind if you're keen on getting this watch. On the other hand, if you get a good unit like I do, you're going to have an absolute blast with your $120 fidget spinner. If you want to see another gorgeous dial by Pear Paulin, check out my review of this stunning salmon dial. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.